You're listening to a fresh new podcast on healing, spiritual development, nutrition, energy work, and sometimes aliens. From the owner of the celebrity acclaimed Raw Republic Juice Bar and Wellness Center in New Orleans, Louisiana, Sheena Manina. Yes, that's her real name. This is Raw Talk with Sheena. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again. I always say, if you haven't heard this podcast, you know that Amberly is somewhat of a co-host now, and so she is not going to get an introduction. <laughs> but everyone else is. So Amberly's taking a much-needed rest tonight on the North Shore, and we have a very special guest joining us. Her name is Noelle. Hello. And she's been on the podcast before. She's so amazing. So you guys know that I own a juice bar in New Orleans, and we've expanded to a wellness studio above the juice bar. And we have spaces to do energetic healing and also Eastern medicine, which includes acupuncture and cupping and shakaju therapy and all those amazing things. So Noelle is the master of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> healing with needles. So and, and she, other tools, yeah. <laughs> Another, t- uh, we talked about this on the first podcast. So if you're interested in a lot of information regarding Eastern medicine, we covered tons of stuff on that topic. Um, I told you guys I started going to Noel because I'm such a baby. I'm so sensitive. I did not want needles in me when I initially. There was something inside of me that was pointing me towards like you need acupuncture and I believe it was back pain which now I can see very clearly was like depletion it was like I was so depleted even more than I am now and I was probably doing so much less because I wasn't I just wasn't taking care of myself but um when I started going to Noel you're so like gentle she works on children all the time I always send like parents with difficult children to <laughs> Noel, and also like everyone who's afraid of needles I'm like just I mean like when you look at you or just like hear your sound the voice like the sound that comes out of your mouth it's like you can't be afraid of Noel. and it and the whole process of a healing session with you is always just that it's like so relaxing and so soothing it's like having an angel work on you you're so sweet <laughs> you're so sweet it's the truth thank i you. wouldn't say it if it wasn't thank you i could just as easily say like oh my god this person's like super aggressive and like <laughs> it's gonna hurt but it's gonna be okay but that's fine like it's just that's not the yeah. experience with you it's yeah, just so sure. it's like uh, it's like you're being worked on by an angel like some divinity has stepped in and said like okay uh. i'm gonna like j- very gently just play with like needles all over your body like just j- very gently just like put a suction cup like <laughs> sh- on your back and like move it around and it's like you make the uncomfortable very comfortable oh thank you so much yeah and we've been playing I'm blushing with, uh, <laughs> it's like the best thing ever that noelle is upstairs and like i have access to her all the time now because i get to play with all the things that i probably wouldn't have made as many appointments as i've or like had as many interactions with her if she weren't like in my place of work now which like thank god she is but um there was like one situation a couple of weeks ago where i had this insane headache I know that it was, was it, it was definitely a migraine. Yeah. Right? You, I think you were saying it was a tension related headache, but yeah. And it was, it was painful. You were laying on the floor with like yeah. crystals all <laughs> over you. Right. It was not the funnest. Yeah. And Noelle like just cinched that in the butt like pretty easily. Um, there are like so many things that you fix so fast. It's, yeah. It's. Well, you're, it's not. <laughs> you're I, like, I know I'm good at no, it. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's hard, just like you, I'm sure, when you're working with energy, you, it's hard to take credit for something like that. You know, you're f- the facilitator. I'm the facilitator. Not like I'm getting in there and necessarily doing anything. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's using, I mean, you ultimately are, your body's doing the healing. I'm just mm-hmm. directing it with the tool where. You direct it with your hands. You can take credit, Noelle. <laughs> okay, I'm awesome. <laughs> no, just... I mean, you're really good at what you do. Do you know what makes yeah. you so good at what you do? What do you think it is? Mm, I think it's my ability to connect with people. So 
yeah, I, we use a lot of diagnostic techniques, you know, a lot of palpation, a lot of, you know, reading pulses, looking at tongue, trying to paint a picture of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think what really matters is the rapport between the patient and mm -hmm. the practitioner. Okay. And when that's there, mm -hmm. it's like magic happens. Okay. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's a skill and technique and mm -hmm. those things are involved. Absolutely. But if you were to say what makes me really good, I mm -hmm. think that's probably number one. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. I would agree with saying that that's really important and that that, that makes you really good. But I think that there's way more than that. <laughs> like, well, I think yeah. that when you say that you have a good rapport with someone, you're saying that you have a good energetic exchange. Yeah. And that you can actually meet on an energetic level. Mm -hmm. But I think what makes you so good is that you are beyond technique, which is always what I'm like. Right. I'm always yeah. like intrigued and inspired by everything that's beyond technique. Right. Mm -hmm. Because technique means that everything works for every single person exactly the same way. Right. It doesn't leave a lot of leeway for, you know, the audi oddities like, like, hello, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm like the oddity for everything. So if I go to a doctor that just knows one way that I'm not right. going to be healed. Well, but I also think that when that happens, they're not connecting to you. Mm -hmm. Like if they're putting you into, if they're saying, okay, this, I see X, Y, Z symptom. And so this must mean this, mm -hmm. but they're not connecting to you. Mm -hmm. Then that's, it's different. Like, I don't know how to say it when I, when I say connect to people. I, I don't know. It's a feel, I do. I tune into, I tune into, to that person and, um, and I'm just there to hold the space for their healing, like unconditionally, truly. She's, That's, she's I better than I give all of my she's, self into She's better than this. She's the best ever. <laughs> if you've ever wanted, oh my gosh, if you've ever been interested. Your listeners want to hear about something else. <laughs> no. Noelle's the little acupuncture angel. If you've ever been afraid, come see Noelle. Oh. No. There are some other things that I wanted to talk about tonight because beyond being an amazing Eastern medicine practitioner, you also spent an entire year of your life meditating. Yeah. Noelle, <laughs> that's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. You know why? Yeah. It's no one, no one's going to say, like, who else is saying I mean, many people may be, but like mm -hmm. those people sometimes maybe don't come back into like mainstream anything. So you don't hear from the people who <laughs> exit life for a year. They're in an ashram somewhere, right? <laughs> right. Or I'm like on a yet. beach, like maybe soon. in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give me another year or so <laughs> we'll see what happens you can't leave so i hope you enjoyed that experience when it happened but yeah you need to like go through the like pre during and post situation of that mm. if you, whatever you yeah. want to say i'm totally willing i look I am a big fan of using myself as an example if it will help other people i'm not mm. super um I'm, I'm not very closed, much to the chagrin of a lot of my <laughs> family members who don't want me to talk about certain things. Um, so, yeah, honestly, it probably started right around the time I was graduating school. Mm -hmm. College? My, college, when I was mm -hmm. graduating um, acupuncture school. So it's a master's degree. It's a really long, gr it's kind of a grueling program. Mm -hmm. It truly is because it. the school that I went to, Maryland University of Integrative Health, is was used to be called Thai Sophia, right? It's a five element school. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn all about the five elements and all about emotions. And we had to talk about that in front of our classmates. I mean, it was like really emotionally draining, a lot of like time consuming like, memorization Then we had clinical. So it was, it was hard for me. So when I got out of school, I kind of didn't, I kind of needed time to mm -hmm. like heal. <laughs> You know what I mean? I understand exactly what you're so saying. So I think what happened is I just, I got out and I was learning everything I could about all these different other ways to heal, to help someone heal. Because I knew acupuncture wasn't everything. So I, at one point I thought I wanted to be a feng shui consultant. Mm -hmm. And I actually purchased That's a... Awesome, by right. the way. <laughs> well, the reason in my mind was, okay, I'm going to see someone for a limited number of hours a month, and they have all those other hours to be at home, and I'm sure their energy at home affects them, mm -hmm. for sure. So I wanted to learn about it. So I sent away for <laughs> a $1,000 home study program. 
<laughs> to be a feng shui consultant, which Sheena, I literally have opened that book three times since then. That was years and years ago. So I never completed the program. I never okay. even began. It was truly a waste of a grand. But <laughs> um, basically, so I got out of school. I, want, I was just voraciously learning mm -hmm. stuff, but also really needing a break at the same time. And that's, it was like the perfect storm for me to just get into meditating because I wasn't ready to, I think I was a little scared to commit mm -hmm. full time to my practice. And I wanted to learn so much more. And yeah. I, it just... It was like the perfect storm for me to begin meditating. And so one day you were like, peace out life. What? No, it wasn't so much that. It was just, it was, I, okay, actually, another thing, it was, it's, when I say the perfect storm, it's like mm -hmm. all of these things together, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing that happened right around that time is I moved into my own place because I think I was living with a roommate. So I moved into my own apartment and it was huge. Mm -hmm. So, and I was living by myself for the first time, which was awesome. And I, um, I had this one room dedicated just for that, just for meditation. And I think in the beginning, I was looking at it more for like a place for me to just like have space. you know to have mm -hmm. space i had a journaling habit which i've had for many 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 years so it was like had a bunch of journals over there and just mm -hmm. do whatever i want there was nothing in the room but a carpet and like all of my little <laughs> little stuff and actually it's funny because that was in the relationship corner of my apartment so i made sure everything was like red and pink <laughs> Because I was learning to be a feng shui <laughs> consultant, so I, I kind of knew about that stuff. Um, and so I think that it was just, it just started. It just started, and it started to feel so good. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a couple meditations that um, were by Wayne Dyer, mm -hmm. one of his guided meditations, the Ah Meditation. Mm -hmm. And when I first did it, tears were streaming down my face, like, not not like well I'm sad I didn't even know what I was feeling it was just tears was from opening movement or releasing. oh my mm -hmm. gosh yeah it was amazing and, and then this I, is post an entire year of acupuncture uh, what do you mean like out of school this was this was this the was year right after I after I finished so you school. had what I'm saying is you had just had like a ton of meditation I'm sorry, a ton of acupuncture done to your body sure and yeah. meditation like this one meditation opened something yes. like magic yes mm -hmm. yes i mean yes of course there's so many it's what i love i don't think acupuncture is the only thing that can move energy i think it's a great way to do it it's something i've learned it's something i've found really effective mm -hmm. for a lot of things but meditation is also really beautiful or or um even doing like emotional clearing of some kind Wait, those kind so of, many things can shift anything, things like that's why yeah i'm exercise. always telling people do everything if yeah. something comes into your consciousness like i need to show up for this class or like i need to go paint something or mm -hmm. like wow you just said wayne dwyer i've been wanting to look up you know just like do it yeah because anything could be an answer to you moving to like that next level yeah. energetically right absolutely and that's and that's what happened actually that was a shorter answer than mine. That, but that's actually what happened is I just, because I was living by myself, mm -hmm. I no longer had school, but I wasn't ready to fully to commit to my own practice. You know, I was treating people here and there, but I wasn't like fully, like, I'm going to be a business person now. I was still very much exploring yeah. in that mode and just listening to whatever I wanted. So I would wake up in, one day and I would... Um, be drawn to a certain person or a certain talk or a certain book or to go outside or to write something and I would do it like there was no one for me to answer to mm -hmm. you know it was it was and that's slowly how I found the things that really lit me up mm -hmm. and um, and my meditation practice was one of those for sure oh my god I can remember some really vivid um, moments during meditation and, <laughs> which led me eventually to all the things i mean led me to infinite possibilities which mm -hmm. i'm now doing and i and i love so much um what else well I, okay or, yeah so i love like this is so awesome <laughs> this is like the best ever because I hope everyone's following me <laughs> of course <laughs> okay you're like the easiest person ever to follow yes. you're toastmasters vice president <laughs> <laughs> You, like, can't say this anything without it making sense. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I need to go to a Toastmasters meeting. I make up words, and I would fail Toastmasters. <laughs> they would be like, you are not actually allowed to speak here. 
They would um, love you. Yeah. Noelle is a Toastmasters vice president here in Louisiana. What an honor. <laughs> you're so you're so cute. Oh my god. I forgot to wear my little pin on my on my shirt. I should have. Think of what you would imagine the Toastmasters vice president being <laughs> and then like find exactly the opposite of what that is. That's Noelle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or yeah, not, but I'm going to take compliment. it as a compliment. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're like the cutest nerd ever. I'm, there are not as I'm many nerd nerds sure. as cute as you. Aww. Some are, but um, okay. So I I want to like. She's so sweet. <laughs> so are you? Oh so, God. <laughs> Noelle's the funnest. They're... Noelle is the one that took the succulent and the one that uh, can't um, fold sheets. Just look, as a reminder, I. People are donating succulents to Raw Republic. I, just I think let you Amberly know. took it. <laughs> I really think Amberly took it. She <laughs> is that she is trying to play a trick. I Noelle, seriously, a client showed up with two succulents today. <laughs> like it, the word is getting out that there there are succulents missing, and people are bringing plants to our doorstep. I'm not. I wish I was kidding. Bonus. <laughs> it's great. We always receive okay. gifts, so it's fine. But um, it's yeah. beautiful. But. Well, I, just, I like, still, I really. What happened? I think it was Amberly. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So where is it, Amberly? Still missing. <laughs> anyway. Um. Okay. So Noel, you were. <laughs> w- okay. Th- when you've told me, I you've said, Sheena, I've spent an entire year of meditating. Does that mean that that's all you did that year? No, it okay. doesn't mean that. That's, what I guess what I meant was it was the ma- it was the majority of my focus, mm-hmm. and I did it on a regular basis. Like it took up most of my <laughs> life. It did. I mean, it did. It took up most of my life. That I would is spend. Do, awesome. I would do. I would do it for hours sometimes. I mean, sometimes it wouldn't be s- straight up like you know sitting in lotus pose mm-hmm. with my hands in a in a mudra yeah it was it would be like a little bit of meditation and then insights would come to me and i would do a ton of writing i did so much i mean i still do that Mm -hmm. but um do you think that so after doing all this meditation what do you think that that growth looked like inside of you like what what could you say like palpable things that shifted or transpired through that experience or is it more so just like you energetically or spiritually evolved hmm I think both of those things Mm -hmm. I mean it it was I mean there's so many really beautiful moments I came to really understand what self-love meant I mean that was huge for me I remember I I mean, I had really, I'd gotten into Louise Hay at this point. So like all the big Hay House authors, mm-hmm. I, I was reading all of their mm-hmm. stuff. And like, I that was right around the same time I f- first got into Oracle cards. So I had those. Mm-hmm. I was just like into everything, right? It was just like a sponge for this information. And so I, I started to do affirmations. And one day I was doing mirror work. And I just burst into tears. Meaning you were looking in the mirror. I was and looking at myself. I was looking. Yes, I was looking at myself oh in the my mirror gosh. on the bathroom this is big floor. Shit. On the bathroom floor, and it, well, I had already become really comfortable with looking into my own eyes, which is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Chinese medicine, that's where you, the, the Shen shines from, our soul or spirit. And I mean, you can see that, and I think everybody recognizes that on some level. No, that's huge. That's actually really big i know a lot of people who do not look at themselves in the eye in the mirror yeah well right right it's it can be really hard so anyway i had but i had gotten comfortable to to look at myself in the mirror but that day whatever it was that i was saying or whatever meditative state that i had been in had opened me up in a way that i truly began to see myself Mm -hmm. from like a third person's perspective where I just, oh my gosh, you know, I'm getting goosebumps from now describing it, where I just started bawling mm-hmm. and crying and, and like really looking at myself and being able to say that I was beautiful and mm-hmm. not from a place of, of like conceit or like n- absence of doubt, just like a knowing, like an actual witness to my own beauty, which was crazy. 
for me to experience because I had been through so much in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so things like that. <laughs> Things like that were happening on a daily basis. I began to see, I began to get into spirit animals mm -hmm. and to start connecting with like different animal energies. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that part, all kinds that of part, stuff. <laughs> okay, that, that part could go on for like the next 47 <laughs> years because you're just like into like all a bunch of stuff. But yeah, but that one thing is pretty significant, I would say. And I think. It's weird. Like, I didn't know you back then. I've only known you for like two and a half or three years. But I feel like what I would say you developed, even though I didn't know you back then, I would say like, if I'm looking at you now, something that is the outcome of someone who has spent a lot of time with themselves, I feel like you're really good at speaking up for yourself especially in a business setting. You're like, I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> I feel that you know how to take care of yourself. I feel like you can connect with what you like want to eat and what you need to eat. I mm -hmm. feel that you can you connect with when you need to go outside. Mm -hmm. I feel that you, um, you just act in a way that seems more ease- like has more ease than, than the way a lot of other people operate in life. And right. I, and it's it does seem Presence. to come from a place Presence. that you have sourced that connection with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's presence. It's the ability to be pr I mean, I'm not perfect, of course. There there are times where I'm not present, but but yeah, I think that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. just presence is and and also because I was didn't have to answer to anybody yeah. for so many years. <laughs> I also have, I I love that ability to live in that way, like in the flow, mm -hmm. like having, making, you know, my freedom is super important to me. Right. It's super important to but me. But wait. More than, more than like, um, probably almost anything else. Yeah. Honestly. But. So I don't, I put that above like money. I put that above like. Um, but this is all connected to self-care and self-love. Right, right. And why should we ever have to answer to anyone? Even if we are in a relationship or even if we are working for. Like, yeah. It, I think that if you ask for a shift in perception, you can you can make it a decision. You can make it a choice. You know, I'm I'm in this relationship and I'm choosing to do this or not do this, but I'm also going to choose to do this for myself. Right, right, right. For, you know, what I mean? it, there's still that to me that still requires a little bit of negotiation, which is worth it. I think that we should be in relationship with other people for mm -hmm. sure, but it is a little bit of a trade off because you are. Even if you ultimately end up doing what you want, yeah. you still have that little bit of like pull. You have to, you have, you have a little bit of a pull that tugs you in another direction. Yeah. So it's not as completely free as, as being yeah. single. But can I ask your permission for, for one thing? Yeah. I want to show you something. Oh God. It's coming out of the bag where everything comes out of. So many things. It's like you're Mary Poppins. Holy mother of God. <laughs> I knew there was something on you that was so big and vibrational. Noelle just pulled out a stone the size of my this head. This crystal out is. Out of her bag. Her bag isn't so even that big. Amazing. Jesus. Do you want to hold it? Yeah. Oh my God. There are. Okay, there's 50,000 quartz on, on this stone. It is. So incredible. I wanted to. Get Why is this it. here? Because I wanted you to feel it. I love that so much. Wow. Noelle, why did you just pull this you. out of your bag? I did it. <laughs> did you want me to stop talking because about something? Because you were talking. <laughs> well, you are talking about asking permission, so I thought this was a good <laughs> moment to think. That. Yeah, um, there's there's a quartz the size of a baby it's probably sitting about, on my lap right now. It's probably about five, six pounds. It's gorgeous. Where it's did so you gorgeous, get this? isn't it? It's amazing. My uh, boyfriend's stepmother or farmed yeah, this. They farmed it. Yep. And then, so what happened was, this is very interesting. I don't know if the <laughs> if if we 
somehow had this happen through our thoughts, creating things. But we were over their house one day for a meal, and they have a lot of crystals in a row. Mm-hmm. And I picked up that one, and for some reason, I was like holding it like a baby. Like this because is it's so the size of a baby. amazing. <laughs> That's why you could like, like, this is a newborn. It it is. No, but it's so gorgeous. I wish that they could see it. We'll have to post a picture. It's so pretty. But anyway, so we were, I was holding it all night and I had to give it away. I couldn't go home with it. I had to put it back. And then the next time I came over, she was like, I have something for you and just gave it to me. I can't, I couldn't believe it. You know why? It's the best thing I think I've ever been given. You give people crystals and gifts all the time. I do. I do. When you give, it always comes back to you times five pounds, (laughs) apparently. (laughs) It's the most amazing thing. It's not that shocking that someone has given you a quartz the size of a baby (laughs) to me. That's like, I'm like, oh, well, that would happen to someone who like pulls gifts out of her bag every single day for like every single person. It's so fun. It's so sweet. I love it. <laughs> so what are you going to do with it? I was just going to talk with it and see if anything came it, up. It, let's see if the conversation gets more inspired. Okay. You can have it back, your baby. <sighs> it's big. I, did you feel this, though? Yes. My hands are vibrating still, actually. Is it too strong? No. Okay. Mm-mm. No, That's usually cool. if, if a crystal is too strong... I can usually also ask that it like calm down. I can ask that the ener- my energy and its energy integrate better. Hmm. Sometimes when I work with quartz, I'll get like a headache, and it's because I ha- I wasn't mindful of like what was happening. So, but when I'm present and with crystals and with stones and things like that, I can usually just request that they work with my energy better. Instead yeah. of just being like, oh, no, too strong. Right. You know? Right. You get it to each other. Or I work with them in a different way. Mm-hmm. Instead of, like, holding them and directing energy through them, I'll just, like, float my energy on top of theirs. Mm, you know? I see. And You're so amazing. But that one She's was just, like... She's a wizardress. I think that... I think I made that word up. That's great. Wizardress. That's what happens on this podcast. <laughs> we make up words. Sorceress. Uh, conversate is a word that I have made up. You made up I, wizard dress. <laughs> <laughs> there was another word that I made up. Yeah. You thought that that one word was not a word, but it was. What Which was one? that? Yeah, that was that podcast. one too. That was a word. I looked it up. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Catalyze. Catalyze. That was that is, is a word. I was like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, I think that <laughs> is a word. And I went directly to the dictionary and looked it up. <laughs> and it absolutely is a word. She's yes, intelligent Sheena Manina. Look at me. <laughs> if this chair I don't know flips how she does backwards, all she does. like, oh my god, I'm <laughs> so close to my death right now. This chair is like teetering. <laughs> Just watch out for me, okay, Noel? The crystal will protect you. Okay, I liked where I was going with that last thought. I'm sorry to interrupt um, you, but you're you were talking because about needing permission. Yeah, right. Okay, so right. I was saying this is something that I play with a lot in my relationship, and it's it's something that I talk with a lot of clients about because mm-hmm. oftentimes people think that their partner wants them to act a certain way or fill certain roles or do certain things, okay? So they they create a lot of assumptions based on what they think their partner would want. And then mm-hmm. they play out, you know, taking action on those assumptions. And that oftentimes separates someone from their essential being or their state of being or their spirit. And then they come to me, you know, why am I... Like, who am I? What do Mm -hmm. I want? What do I need? And it's the separation of that connection with one soul. And really, what an energetic and positive partner wants for you Mm -hmm. is for you to be close to that soul. Right. So they, and, and sometimes people can't communicate that. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's a concept that you wouldn't know unless you're there already. Right. You know, so it's really hard. That's why... Yeah, that's why codependency happens. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. you know it's hard to see it when you're in it. Mm-hmm. But for sure, a healthy a healthy partner 
would know they would know themselves what that feels like and mm-hmm. so they would want they could recognize it in you and want that in you too and right. and also want to be with someone like that right like mm-hmm. you want to be with someone else who's whole and able to to lift you up and have you grow and expand right. and and know what that means themselves right, right. yeah yeah and so i am offering this space for people who are listening to the podcast to say you know you actually have the best information about connecting the most with yourself and taking care of yourself and so really like taking ownership of those messages and taking ownership of your needs makes you a better partner more so than what you think that your partner wants you to do it's kind of a big message because you're in the middle of it and you're like living day to day and all of these like normal patternings and all these like normal behaviors are coming in your mind. Like, well, my mom said I should cook dinner for him like this. Like, you know, a good wife is at home and like folding the sheets and (laughs) not you, Noel, (laughs) not you. You're not allowed to fold the sheets. (laughs) <laughs> Noel doesn't know how to fold I sheets. I break but dishes it's okay. too. I break dishes too. <laughs> no, we're just saying that like there are so many normal behaviors, quote unquote, normal behaviors that need to be taken care of. I really hope that more people can bust out of those because when you do that and you start listening to what you're being inspired to do, and then fueling that that soul aspect, that fire aspect, that spirit spirit aspect of yourself, you're giving your partner the space to do that him or herself as well right whereas just telling someone like you really need to meditate you really need to eat better you really need to exercise like that's never worked Mm -hmm. ever like have has anyone ever asked like a 30 something year old man to like do something more because he's gonna be like oh i get it do it less (laughs) <laughs> and it's not I mean it's just I'm sure that they feel the same way about us and it's really just because it's not like no one wants to be told what to do because no. when you're when I have the same exact reaction if someone tells me not to do something I'm like well hmm why would they tell me not to do it let me see what it's like to do it <laughs> and I so I totally understand coming from that perspective whereas if I see someone around me who's growing and just like seemingly so peaceful and just connected and happy Mm -hmm. and joyful because they're doing all these things like meditation and like listening to their bodies on what to eat and like doing spontaneous things and going to hang out with their friends when they want to or staying home when they want to and like nourishing themselves and watching a movie and feeling really good about all of these things like that person is is growing into that space that everyone around them wants to emulate Mm -hmm. including their partners so you give by taking care of yourself like so authentically and so deeply with so much conviction and commitment you are giving your partner the exact same space and inspiration to do that as well right yeah do you think (laughs) but how often do we not do that well I don't know if I'm in the mood to talk about this topic right now, you but I don't to- know. You, can change the topic I, if you, want. you know why? Because <laughs> there's part of me that feels like, yes, you're giving them the space to do that themselves. Mm-hmm. But if they're not ready, uh-huh. then it's not like, do you then know you what I mean? you might part. Yeah. <laughs> Which it, that it, might be appropriate too. Right. Do you want to limit your growth? Right. I think that. I think that you can still be in a relationship. I think that someone may not want to be committed to someone who's on a path of of growth really fast, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But what's but it depends on what's really important to you. If that relationship is really important to you and you've committed to that relationship, maybe you just communicate in a in a way with your partner that says like you know what, I'm really on this path of taking care of myself because I really want this for my life. I need you to communicate the things that you need and want from me. And as long as you agree with them, then you're still working in a space. Right, of partnership. Of partnership. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're not like, I'm so fiercely well independent that like, peace out, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Go and meditate. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that. It can be It can be on more like common ground, you know, and it can be. But, but I think that... That even that communication is is coming from a very strong place versus someone who just kind of feels very um, 
programmed into a way of life that they're not connected to. Right. Absolutely. That's dangerous. Yeah. That's but it so happens dangerous. very often. Oh, yeah, I know. And it's not just with partners like boyfriends and husbands and wives and girlfriends. And it's also with parents, sure, and siblings, and sure, work relationships. Like these, yeah. all relationships transpire. Is transpire the right word? Yes, girl, transpire, you're on it. Transpire, transpire all environments. That's the proper use of oh. the word. No, <laughs> <laughs> transpire through all no. environments. No, no, transcend all environments. Or what are you trying to say? Yeah, transcend like rise above. No, basically. I'm trying to say. That this scenario is <laughs> is viable for many different types of relationship environments. Okay, okay, right, okay. I see what you're trying to say. <laughs> I, I know, wait, what is the word you're trying to use? It applies. It applies to all. Yeah, yeah we'll just yeah. say that. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Will Miss Toastmaster. Do you guys have to read have- the sources and stuff? No, because but I seems... probably should after this podcast. No. I'm learning well, that my vocabulary. Please is... don't read at thesaurus, <laughs> for the love of God. <laughs> there are so many better things that you can read. That's true. Did I, you oh, like? I have so many books right now. I'm oh, sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm excited about it, but now I feel <laughs> like I, I just added a little too much to my plate in terms of books. Today <laughs> I just got your three superpowers. Have you heard of this book by no. Sonia Choquette? No, but I'm glad that you're going to read it so you can tell me about it. You know, they're intuition, meditation, and something else. I, I ran out the door before I read the last one. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Intuition, meditation. Intuition, meditation, and imagination, perhaps? That's awesome. I think I could be wrong. I don't remember. It, j- it literally just came in the mail before I came here. And I ripped it out of the little, you know, Amazon you're so box. Cute. And then I came here. I, yeah, I'm, I like to read. Like, how many <laughs> books do you have next to your bed? Oh, my God. Honestly? Yeah. I probably have, okay, so I'm like a squirrel. I have next <laughs> to my bed three, like, three books. Mm-hmm. I think they're about three and maybe a notebook in case mm-hmm. I want to write down some notes. Mm-hmm. And then I have at my desk another probably eight or nine books on top of it. Are you in the middle of all these books? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have in my purse a book. Oh. <laughs> We're going to keep going. And then in my in my like kitchen living area, I have more books that are like out of the bookshelf because I'm also in, I'm probably reading about 10 books at the same time right now. That's awesome. But it's not because it, it is. It is. It no is. Else. It is awesome. That it just is means awesome. that you're gonna you're I, gonna like I, <laughs> you're gonna absorb that information so well. It's all. You know what I'm noticing is that I'm drawn to the same information. It's just coming from all these different people. But exactly. it's the same information. Yes. It's the same information. Exactly. So it actually is really beautiful and useful. I think. Um, you know, someone told me once that people who study NLP, neuro neuro linguistic programming. Mm-hmm. There's something called a convincer number, right? And people have, like, some people, their convincer number is one. So you could tell them something once, and they'd be like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> that's true. That's it. And then uh-huh. other people, they have to get it, like, five or six different ways. Okay. <clears throat> I think my convincer number is, like, 25. Okay. So the more sources I can read that are saying the same thing, it's just, like, to me, it just points to deeper truths, but deeper universal truths. But do you trust truths. your intuition? Oh, absolutely. I Well, no, no, actually, I won't say that like that. Absolutely. I, yes, I do. I think that a lot of it actually has been accelerated since I began working at Raw and being around you guys because there aren't many other west like acupuncturists that i know Mm -hmm. that practice this way and i have friends who are who are into reiki and all those kind of things but no one's really acknowledging intuition Mm -hmm. and energy like and healing you are and healing Mm -hmm. like you are and so it 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 was like all the things that i knew in my heart and that i would write about suddenly i was around people who were like living from these principles, these Mm -hmm. things that are really familiar to me. Mm -hmm. So I started to trust my intuition a lot more and play around with it, have fun with it. Like, I'm not trying to say I'm, 
it's like I'm a psychic and I'm going to sit out in Jackson Square and read cards. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> trying to do that. Or, or, you know, it can be a lot more sophisticated than that, of course. But I do have, there are times where things come through me that are not, I don't know otherwise how yeah, yeah how how else or i'll end up for me it's all it's always like an after like an afterthought like wow i can't believe that i knew to bring this right for that person or i or in I, your bag I, but it's not a with conscious the other thought gifts. it's like it just happens when i'm in the <laughs> with all the other gifts yeah yeah and so I, i'm beginning to trust it more i've been doing a lot of automatic writing lately which is super fun that's awesome yeah I asked you that question because you were saying like some people need convincing. Yeah. And I understand what you're saying about because I feel that I've sought a lot of information that is the same information from different types of sources. Mm -hmm. And really there's all, you know, there's there's only one thing. Right. But in terms of your intuition, sometimes you can ask for um confirmations and you can ask for right. signs to confirm mm -hmm. what you're intuiting mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> intuiting is a word it is but oftentimes the way that you get really good at your intuition is by just accepting it R absolutely immediate like the absence with immediacy. of doubt yeah it's the absence of doubt you know and yeah yeah. So but, that's why I asked you that because I don't really think I think that you actually really do listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. So you 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 wouldn't have a convincer number of twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself more credit, but, Noelle. You're like a three. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think you also have to remember I've been on this path for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what I mean is like these these concepts and these ideas about about oneness and about love and about energy and mm -hmm. about um, just like all the little subtle things about uh, you could say law of attraction or thoughts creating like all of these things are coming together for me. But I've been st like studying them for a long time, like mm -hmm. many, many years, mm -hmm. you know. So, yes, I do trust my intuition. Uh, to a certain what do you extent, think has it's been a while it's what do you been think has while. like caused these things to come together like what how has it gone from study uh -huh. to that being your reality i don't it's it's all the baby steps it's all the baby steps yeah, it's I agree all with of, you. it's just listening it's just mm -hmm. listening to yeah i guess it's listening to my intuition yeah right like when you look back at you're just like wait what huh how did I find this person how did I find this information how did this evolve it just happens right yeah the most impactful part of my journey thus far I think what what actually just like catapulted everything for me was me absorbing information about being okay where I was because it allowed me to settle in and to relax into my existence in a lot of ways and before that I was fighting mm. and I, f I felt like when I when I started relaxing into okay it's okay that I am feeling this way right now it's okay that I'm tired it's okay that I want to eat this it's okay that I um, work this way it's okay that I feel this way emotionally whatever when I s when I felt okay with where I was mm -hmm. then people like you people like Amberly, like more people started coming into my life that supported that yeah which made my life i you know i'm still i still am working with this the same things but in a lot of ways i experience more joy yeah because i have support um in being a human being mm -hmm. versus you know, the way that I had normally felt in a lot of arenas of my life, which was, you know, unless you're working, you're not useful. Right. I know. I know. That is, that's a pretty strong belief that a lot of people have. Yeah. Or unless you are, I mean, really, your it's worth is based on what you're on doing your work and what you're doing. What you produce. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's like this, no wonder we as a collective group of people are so sh- like physically stressed, emotionally stressed. Yeah. Like we, we take no time to be silent and like to have those blank moments. Mm-hmm. We spend so much time thinking that we need to either be making money or doing what's expected in, in at home. Like we really, we're not sometimes honoring the messages that are saying like you're tired right you need to go sit in a bed or right. you need to go to the beach or you need right. to go to the woods right. right you need to like eat some soup for a couple of days drink mm-hmm. some juice not even okay it's not even that the message is you need to but that you're allowed to yes because yes. people don't think that they're not allowed to do that yes. for whatever reason and sometimes they literally can't because of mm-hmm. of you know, obligations and stuff. But sometimes obligations are really more mental and yeah. not actual. Yeah. Like, do you, you know, have to go like, to every child that you know's third birthday? <sighs> no. It's so tough. And then what are we teaching the kids? Right. I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to really speak on this because I am not a parent right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to, you know, well, you have a cat. Put myself in someone's shoes that I'm not. <laughs> 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 You're right. I do. I do. <laughs> Who is in dire need of Halloween costume right now? Um, dress your cat up like another animal, <laughs> like like a spider. I love it. I was going to dress him as a unicorn. I love that idea. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. But I just want you to like dress him up as a bug so that he could, you could like video. So him. last year I got a mouse costume for him. That's so funny. Yeah. Was it cute? He was also a gangster. You saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who would ever say that you're not a parent? <laughs> This is like parent well, I have actually only fed him all organic non-GMO food from his Yay. from the time I got him since he was a baby. Yeah. When I first moved to New Orleans, I uh, <laughs> my brother lives here, right? <laughs> so I I just had arrived and I was like, "Oh, I need to get my cat food." And it was late at night. And my brother's like, just go to Walgreens. And I'm like, I can't because they don't have the organic food. And my brother's like, I haven't even met your cat, but I hate him already. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, I'm my baby. I, why would I feed him anything I wouldn't eat? Exactly. I mean, no, I, not that I would eat his cat food, but I understand. The, quant- the quality. You're a good mom. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of pets are a lot of pets are developing cancers. More than I ever remember when I was younger. And that could just be because of, you know, for a myriad of reasons. But I'm noticing it a lot. Mm-hmm. And if and if there's a chance that genetically modified foods mess up our organs at all, yeah, then why, you know? Test not it. Gonna, uh, yeah, I'd rather... They have the saying, pay the farmer now or the doctor later. So I'd rather pay the farmer now. That's cute. Yeah. I think that... <laughs> Our animals pick up on our energy so much. Oh, my And our energy is at an all-time level of, like, franticism. And so I can only imagine that that also transpires. Is that an appropriate use of the word? God, I'm I'm on it. You are on it. I'm just... (laughs) Yay. Okay. That that energy transpires to our pet as as well as the food situation. Yeah. I wish I, I I really wish that I had time to cook my dogs their food. Oh. I could probably make time. I anything that you you can make time for anything. Yeah. But yeah. I would ideally like to make time to do that. I think I don't know. Do, do I really want to commit to that? Yeah. Like make their food for them. It's a huge commitment. That is, yeah, that is, what would you feed them? Are you Um, talking about, like, raw meat? And Well, uh, I think that if you give them bones, the bones have to be raw. Mm -hmm. But if you give them meat and you wanted it to last, you'd have to cook it Hmm. with other things. So, like, a lot of people just make stew-like things for their dogs mm -hmm, and then keep it for the week. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. I do give my dogs a raw egg on top of their amazing food and selenium. Nice. And coconut oil and sometimes parsley Aww. and like the ends of the carrots and stems from leaves yeah. and stuff like that. And they eat leaves when we go on walks. My cat eats tons of fruit. Really? He is a fruit fanatic. Really? Uh, yes. I have video of him. I mean, 
he will be in another room and I'll cut open a cantaloupe and he'll come running into the room. No joke. God, you have a weird cat. Cantaloupe, watermelon, um, oh my gosh, pears. Pears. He goes, can I say a cuss word in, on this? You can. He goes ape shit. <laughs> it's not like that. But he goes ape shit. Pears, it'll be like, I'll take one out of the refrigerator and I'll rinse it and mm -hmm. I'll be like wiping it with a paper towel or he something. He smells and you wiping he it. He will come running. <laughs> if I eat it on a chair, he'll climb Your up on my- Your cat is just like you. <laughs> oh my God, y'all are so similar. Why? Because we both like pears? No, because if <laughs> I were weird. doing something that you liked <laughs> by the sink and you were in your office, you would be able to smell it. <laughs> Even if it didn't have to do with food, you would just be like, here I come. I sense I sense Maybe. an energetic something that I want to be a part of. And Maybe. you just like, you creep out. You're like, I'm here. That's, yeah, that you, makes me yeah. sound like a super <laughs> creep. <laughs> you're not I'm a not creep at bad. all. <laughs> but you're kind of like a cat. <laughs> You're so cute. Well, I guess the cat does pick up on the owner's energy, so exactly. perhaps <laughs> that's part of it. He's also toilet trained. Stop. I swear. What does that mean? He pees in the toilet? Mm-hmm. And goes and number, number two. two. <laughs> Noelle? You don't, I swear. It's so much better than a litter box. Um, that's City the reason why I don't kitty. live with a cat. The litter box. I know. Do you have a litter box? No. He uses You're the kidding. toilet. You're kidding. That's no. awesome. I potty trained him. <laughs> Moment of mic drop. I'm in <laughs> shock. No, he's potty trained. So he, yeah, I mean, he doesn't Wait. flush the toilet. So. And sometimes it's messy. I mean, I'm not going to say this is the best thing in the world in terms of like it. He always. Does he squat? Yeah. Like yeah. how does he, he pee? Okay. Do you really want me to tell you the process? Because I will. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's this product called City Kitty, okay? okay? And you put it on top of the toilet seat. And while you're in the training phase, it gets quite messy. So oh you have and to... cat pee smells so bad. It, it does. But this is how it works. So you... It sure does. At the beginning, you put the litter box near this insert you put on top of the toilet. And then mm -hmm. you fill it with walnut shells. And then you take the litter box away and they are like, oh, well, I guess this is the new litter box. And they start going on the toilet on this insert. Okay. So it, it gets really messy for you if you have to share the bathroom with a cat in the beginning. But every <laughs> week you cut out, <laughs> every week you cut out a new circle uh -huh. of where this walnut shelf, this or you can get unreal. any kind of flushable litter, right? And then by the end, you just take it off and they go on the, they just get on your seat and go. It's amazing. It's amazing. I can't imagine having a litter box again. No. Yeah. I mean, litter boxes are the reason So you have to share the, the bathroom with the cat if you only have one bathroom. Which like, is it? Does it get all over the seat? <laughs> I mean, how Your bad is it? Your listeners are so <laughs> excited about this. Well, if we could all stop using kitty litter, which is toxic. It's true. It's very that would be, Yeah. I mean, this is like raw talk with Sheena. That's right. This is this is raw. We're not no, he hiding any information. There, every once in a while, he might have some tummy troubles and doesn't always make it all the way in. Meaning, so it's on top of the toilet. <laughs> Sometimes I come home and I have to clean the toilet seat, but you know, there are no worse things. Box. The litter box is worse. Yeah, I think. I think so. Yeah, cool for sure. Well, this is. This is Halloween week, so it's cool that we're talking about cats. It, it makes sense. It's relevant. Yeah, I had a I got a basic and, witch and manicure Halloween today. Halloween costumes for cats. Yeah. Oh. You I didn't know it. that that's what the special manicure was? I heard you talking about it. Buff but Beauty Bar really made a basic witch manicure. So if you're in New Orleans, and I need you want one. something. It's cool. It's matte, like a matte base coat, and uh -huh. then like a glitter. You see the glitter at the tip? So I did like matte black base coat nice. with a glitter tip. It's kind of, it's like basic girl it. and it's witch girl all in one. It's a basic witch manicure. It's fun. <laughs> it, my boyfriend was like, um. But it's fun. And it's Halloween week. Yeah. And after Halloween week, you can do it with different colors. So like next week I could, I could get like a nude base coat that's matte and then a gold like glitter tip or something i like it it's really cute i, I like, like it, it. <laughs> matte nail polish is all the rage yep sure is <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You're so That's cute, Noel. I love you so much. Aww, I'm so glad too. that we did this. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm so excited and happy, and I hope that uh, it was good for your listeners. It always Everybody, is. Everybody, if you struggle with your cat, <laughs> reach out to Noel and cat litter. Yeah. City Kitty is what it's called. No, you should just... If you only have one cat, it'll work really well. If you have more than one, it might be difficult, but... No, we're just going to have people message you on Instagram if they need assistance with this. No. Okay. Why not? (laughs) (laughs) Noelle is love-based medicine on Instagram. (laughs) You can send her a direct message. Tell them to send you pictures. That's so awesome. It's inspiring other cat parents to do... Oh my gosh, I don't want to become the cat lady. (laughs) okay okay you don't have to be the cat lady but if you want support you'll answer people on direct message yes and they (laughs) they can start following you you give really good information on instagram really inspirational quotes and pictures it's a joy to follow you it's it's actually more fun to follow you on snapchat Uh, (laughs) (laughs) do you allow people to follow you on snapchat I don't even know. You're the first one to show me how to use it. I know. I know. I'm getting used to social media right now. I know. It's (laughs) it's great. It's fun. It's fun. I like it. I'm exploring new things every day. Yep. I just used boomerang for the first time yesterday. What? Yeah. Noelle. (laughs) What? Yeah. We've done boomerangs together. But I've never done it on my account. Like, I've never. I just got the app and did it. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny. I feel like I'm making you hip in some ways, but you are. I love the part of you that's not. I love the part of you that like reads books, like probably She's from a library. The part of you that like has a cat that you toilet train. The part of you what that- is not hip about a toilet trained cat? That is, girl. you just have to know you to know like I don't know. You're just awesome. Anyway, I am a very well rounded. You are. Woman. You're so awesome. Thanks. You're awesome, Noel. I love you so much. I'm so glad you're in my life. I want to talk more about love-based medicine because that is so important to me, like so dear to my heart. Say it. More so than Sing it, than sister. City Kitty, although I'm a huge proponent of that. <laughs> well, not necessarily today, but I do want to say that the reason that I coined that term and the mm-hmm. reason that I'm, you know, about, I'm still sort of playing around with the the precepts behind it like what i really mean by love-based medicine every day it's unfolding for me but the reason is that one of the things that came up for me during that year of meditation was the importance of love and the importance of self-love particularly with curing disease in the body and not just that but it's it it helps with everything in life like it helps you know when we feel loved and we're full of love for ourselves and in ourselves and we radiate that out to the world right so it it helps our bodies and it also helps our relationships and it helps you know strangers it's just to me that is you know that's god that's that's god that's source energy Mm -hmm. is is love and it's so important and that's the only thing so i Years and years ago, I had an eating disorder. Mm-hmm. I was bulimic, and it was really bad. And I had gone through all of the traditional channels. So I had therapy. I had they put me on an antidepressant. They tried all of these different. They put me in a facility at one point. I shouldn't say they put me, but I was in a facility at mm-hmm. one point. And nothing shifted for me until I started to do affirmations, and I started to do that meditation. Well. Yeah, nothing really shifted until that point where I started to really open up and I started to really heal. That was sort of like the, it helped everything. It helped everything. Affirmations. Yeah, well, affirmations, that was my, yeah, that was sort of my gateway into that whole whole thing. But yeah. That's what you, that's what started to shift. That's what really you started to a to place sh- of, because if you love yourself deeply then what you do is is nourishing and serving for you. Well, and then I see so you I, had to shift it yes. through affirmations and what were some like meditation obviously mm-hmm. was another tool that you used. Yeah. That's how I found that's how I found myself on the bathroom floor looking at the mirror and being able to see just to really 
be in a state of self-love and know what that's like like mm-hmm. not just a word not just a concept but like know it so deeply mm-hmm. it was such a, i mean that is so important it helped with everything it's it it helped with everything you're talking about being able to make those choices being able to decide mm, this is good for my body today mm-hmm. this is what i this is what i should eat or this is i need to go outside today or like i need to xyz the ability to listen to that is so closely t- linked to th- the inner knowing of my soul, right? That mm-hmm. that love. So that's, to me, I just, it's so important. It's like the basis, I think, of, of health, of true health. Because then it doesn't have to be so hard. Because we're struggling, we were inundated with all of this information. Like, one day this thing is bad for bad for you the next day it's good for you you know what we used to think saturated fat was bad now it's good so it's just like when you when we are able to be in that state of of love you can say vibration or frequency of love then it's it's like the optimal state to be in Mm -hmm. to to, it's like the basis of health Mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. it's so important yeah thank you for sharing that you're welcome that's awesome. That's that is the basis of your practice. It's the basis of you. It's the basis of everything that you share with this world in so many ways. And so I do invite everyone to connect with Noelle more. Um, not only is she an Eastern medicine practitioner, but she's an amazing person. You're an amazing meditation leader. You have so much information experiential information behind you that you can give so much amazing advice and she also teaches amazing workshops that are sometimes available online as well so stay updated with noah the little angel of acupuncture (laughs) love at love-based medicine on instagram Mm -hmm. she may not let you see her snapchats (laughs) but i wouldn't blame her if she (laughs) kept that private (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if look if it makes people feel better to see me make a <laughs> fool of myself why not it's all fun it's so fun it's so fu- um when sheena first introduced me to snapchat <laughs> i was like addicted for a week with all of these yeah. damn filters yeah <laughs> you're still addicted let's not let's be real <laughs> no you still love it it kind of wore off i don't know <laughs> i don't know every once in a while i do love it though <laughs> I'll get on more, more frequently. <laughs> so I don't like those sponsored filters so much. Yeah, those are kind no of one lame. likes those, Noel. Yeah, don't worry. Who uses them? They're not them? a bad person. Do people actually use? Well, them? sometimes, but yeah, people who work for the companies. Mm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> people Sorry, <just> L'Oreal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know what the <laughs> sponsor is. People need to find you on Instagram. And Facebook is your name, Noelle Love. Oh, on Facebook? Yeah, because you do a lot of Facebook Live and like, I do. Like so that. Noelle Love is my personal page. And then I have Noelle Eanes Acupuncture. Yeah, yeah. So just follow both. Yeah. If she wants to be your friend, she'll accept your friendship. Yes. If not, she won't. Don't <laughs> take it personally. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, the friend requests sometimes are just difficult to accept because... It's hard to know who you who you know and like what information you want to give out. On my personal page, but yeah. if people follow your personal page, then potentially they will be able to see something that's public, like a public post or a sure. Facebook Live or something like that. Right. So stay updated with Noelle. She's amazing. Um, what else? We have. I said this on Stassi's podcast, so I'm going to say it again on mine. We, Raw Republic, is launching an amazing new product on Halloween Day. <gasps> what? I saw, but I didn't know it was so soon. It's going to be a black drink. So you can guess what's going to be in it. Do you know, Noelle? Wait, what? It's going to be black. Flax? Black. Black. Oh, so it's charcoal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so we're doing a product launch on Monday. Yay, I'm so excited. I have been waiting for this forever. So we're actually, we have to do it because I said it on Stassi's podcast and too many people heard about it. So now we're being forced. So it's it's, it's charcoal, always good. charcoal with what? Can I'm we know that? I'm not going to say everything. Aww. It's just a little tease. <gasps> I'm going to find out. You're going to try it this weekend. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so yeah, 
stay updated with Raw Republic at Raw Republic Juice on Instagram. You can stay updated with me at Sheena Menina on Instagram. And just as a little reminder, the Basic Witch Tour is coming to Boston the second week of November. So we'll be there from the 10th through the 14th. We are considering doing a public event that Sunday evening because we're getting more and more requests for healing sessions that we can't fit into the schedule. So if you're interested in that, give me a heads up so that I can confirm on this event situation. Um, And if not, I'm just going to take the afternoon off and explore Boston, which would also be optimal. I'm pretty excited about Definitely it. Definitely optimal. So yes, Amberly and I are coming to Boston 11, 10 through 11, 14. And then we're going to Seattle for a conference and we will be doing one day of healing sessions there as well, which isn't completely booked, but it's almost there. So if you'd like to book, please email us as soon as possible. My email address is Sheena at rawrepublicjuice.com. And I have an assistant email address at, um, it's the space at rawrepublicjuice.com. So either of those places, you can get in touch. You know where to find me. I'm I'm available. Um, I'm here every week. I'm on Instagram every day, uh, Facebook. And I check my email like 40,000 times a day. Aww. So if something is urgent, you'll be heard, I promise. Even if I'm not responding to it, if you're sending me information about your life, I'm so grateful. Even if I can't get a personal response to you, I am archiving all this information for topics on the podcast or to just send out frequencies to the world. It does download oh, into my system so in a way that I actually do do that. It's something that I'll just connect with and just say, um, because it, it's a part of me as well. If someone's mm-hmm. dealing with something, it's a part of my existence as well so in some way yeah it's addressed well they're so reaching I appreciate, out to you. i yeah. appreciate the emails definitely but um this is the best week ever Isn't she's so wonderful well we you can't are. we can't just say how wonderful both of us are the whole hour <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to call I feel it a like night. you said that about me a lot <laughs> because you're a rock star acupuncturist and you're so beautiful Aww. like you're just like and you have an an angelic voice it's she knows you're seriously i don't even want to say it but you seriously are one of the most beautiful women that i've ever seen silence i'm we're we're ending and i i I said that to myself before (laughs) i started working at raw with you like i actually said that to myself and i think there are people who would agree with me thanks noelle you're so sweet it's true we are calling it a night. <laughs> <laughs> this basic witch has to go to bed. Okay. We are wishing everyone a happy Halloween. We'll talk to you after. We hope you have an amazing night. We love all of you. Thank you for joining.